Buying an older bush plane, especially experimental or non-type certified, often means you'll be doing some upgrades or modifications to it sooner or later. But which of those upgrades are really worth it and which are a waste of money? Let's find out. When we bought our Bush Baby, a light sport aircraft similar to a Kit Fox 4, it was as basic as these planes come. But it wasn't long before we started upgrading it to suit our mission. To date, we have made at least 10 minor and major modifications which turned it into a very capable Bush plane. But not all of those upgrades were necessarily worth it. So let's go over the pros and cons of each upgrade we've done and I'll give each a value and cost score out of 5 so you can decide if you need the upgrade or not. The first thing we upgraded was the tyres. We replaced the turf glide tyres with 22 inch Aero Classic Bush tyres. These tyres allow you to land on rougher terrain if running them at lower pressures and thus allows the wheels to roll over larger objects like rocks and holes and take quite a bit of shock away from the landing gear. On the other side of the coin, these tires are expensive compared to Turf Glide tires at about $660 for a pair of these or 20,000 Rand in South Africa. And they are thus about five times the cost of new Turf Glide tires. The only other negative is a slight loss of cruise speed due to increased drag. But since it's about flying slow, not flying fast, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. For reference, we lose about 5 miles per hour in the cruise with these tyres. So the verdict on this upgrade will depend on your mission and how much off airport landings you will be doing. For the type of flying I do with our Bush Baby, these tyres are definitely worth it. The next upgrade we made was the biggest and most expensive one, which is the engine upgrade. A lot of older Bush Babies, Kit Foxes and similar light sport aircraft has the 65 horsepower Rotax 582 engine installed. Unfortunately for us flying from a 5000 feet high airfield with density altitude in summer often reaching 8000 feet, our Bush Baby with a Rotax 582 was a bit underpowered. So we installed a Rotax 912 which completely transformed the airplane. Average rate of climb went up from about 300 feet per minute to 500 feet per minute. Average cruise went from 75 miles per hour to 90 miles per hour and takeoff roll reduced from 200 meters to less than 100 meters. And that's only naming a few of the gained benefits, but all of this came at a hefty cost. You should be able to find a used 912 for anything between $3,000 and $13,000 depending on condition and hours. But that usually excludes a lot of the needed accessories and labor to have it installed. Thus, the only real downside of upgrading to a 912 is cost. Another upgrade we made at the same time that the new engine was being installed was the extension of the luggage bay. As I said before, these older Bush Babies and Kit Foxes were designed to fly with a Rotax 582 and thus were never meant to be luggage haulers and most has a fairly low baggage weight limit and thus there was no need for large luggage bays. But with some added horsepower they can carry more weight. And with extra space to carry empty fuel tanks or luggage substantially increases the utility of these aircraft. And at almost zero cost, just a few hours of building, this has got to be the best value for money modification that can be made to these planes. The next modification offers a different kind of value. And the mod I'm talking about is the full clear doors. My first impression when flying with the full clear doors was that we should have done it much sooner. There are really no negatives to doing this modification and the benefits are clear. Literally. If you are finding this video informative so far, please hit the like button so it can spread to more people. Thank you. The next modification can probably be described as purely a safety upgrade, which are the landing lights, navigation lights and strobe lights. These lights make you more visible to other airplanes while flying and reduces the likelihood of mid-air collisions and near misses. The biggest negative is probably the installation effort and the likelihood that these lights will interfere with the radio, meaning you will try everything you can think of to eliminate it until at last you go buy a different brand of lights which somehow sorts out the problem. Ask me how I know that. 
Another upgrade I'm kind of still on the fence about is the MGL Blaze airspeed indicator. Don't get me wrong, these airspeed indicators are pretty cool. And for cheaper than a new steam gauge ASI, you really can't go wrong with these. However, would I necessarily remove a working steam gauge ASI and install one of these? Probably not. But since our steam gauge ASI broke, we thought getting one of these might not be a bad idea. It is also a few hundred grams lighter than a steam gauge ASI, which is a nice little bonus. The next upgrade is a fairly large one, and I made a video dedicated to this modification. The tail upgrade may at first seem like a solution to a somewhat unique problem, until you do some research and find that nose heavy bush planes are a very common problem when installing heavier and more powerful engines. And that's not only on experimental aircraft either. What we gained from this upgrade was a bigger elevator, which means more elevator authority, which is great at low speeds. And that is the major selling point of this modification. Additionally, the balance horns are like power steering and thus the elevator forces becomes much lighter, as well as added electric trim. The value for money of this upgrade will be very subjective, depending on if you actually need any of that. In general though, I believe it provides good value for around 20,000 Rand or $1,300 to do the tail upgrade. The next modification is quite new and hasn't been featured in any of my videos yet. You may wonder why we would install different wheel axles, but there is definitely merit in doing it. While there isn't necessarily anything wrong with the standard axles, they do seem to take a lot of punishment from hard braking, as you can see here from the bolts and axles that came off our bush baby. Now, there is a school of thought that you should not use brakes on a tail dragger, except for taxiing and steering. I don't disagree with that, but with bush flying that luxury often doesn't exist and occasional heartbreaking is a reality if you do off airport landings. So other than the added safety of more robust axles, these axles actually widen the wheel track by about an inch on each side, which in theory has several benefits for a tail dragger. Firstly, a wider wheelbase means the angle of the point of no return before a ground loop is unrecoverable is increased. Additionally, the wider the wheelbase, the more effective differential braking becomes, which can also assist in preventing a ground loop. But keep in mind these benefits I mentioned are very small, since the wheel track is only widened by an inch on each side. I can't say that I've noticed any improvement in ground handling per se, but I guess the point is that there is really no downside in doing the axles upgrade. Okay, only one more modification remains, and that's VGs or micro vortex generators. VGs, when positioned correctly, not only lowers the stall speed, but also improves stall characteristics. The combination of those two factors are invaluable if short landings or slow flying is something you are remotely interested in. And even if you're not interested in that, a lower, more docile stall makes any aircraft safer. And thus, to me, adding VGs is a no-brainer, especially since it's very affordable to do so. And on that subject, click on this video to see an easy way to remove VGs from a fabric wing and refit them in the absolute best position for maximum stall speed improvement.